Joining us right now, folks, is Cliff Albright. He is the uh, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Glad to have him with us. Uh, Cliff, um, look, we expect stupid stuff to happen in Florida. Now we see this. Uh, this is an, an absolute attempt uh, by Governor Ron DeSantis to completely uh, destroy black representation in Congress. So that yeah. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right, Roland. By the way, happy belated anniversary. Appreciate it. Um, no, I mean, we, we, we're we looking at, this is even worse than what we saw out of the recent uh, situations in Alabama with their maps and, and Louisiana with, with their maps and those situations. Uh, you know, the fight was really about whether or not the maps would be changed to give black folks the extra representation that we should have. In this situation, DeSantis, as you already noted, uh, has gone out of his way, in fact, arguing with the, his own Republicans within his state, uh, arguing to, to not just to not increase black representation, but to take away two seats, including carving up the, the seat that's in, in northern Florida, which, which goes from roughly from Jacksonville over to, to Tallahassee, which includes some, some rural black populations in between, but literally carving up that one district into four separate districts none of which would have the ability to elect a, a black representative, taking it from a, a district that has, you know, close to 50 percent black representation and carving it up into four districts, none of which have anything more than 30 percent and some as low as in, in the teens. And so, you know, he's he's been very clear about what it is that he was trying to do. In fact, you know, idiotically clear, because he's basically announced that the reason that he was doing this is because he's trying to carve up this black district, just a, a clear violation, not, not just of the Voting Rights Act, but more importantly, even a Florida law um, and a Florida amendment that was passed regarding fair districts back in, in 2010, an amendment that was passed because of what the voters voted for in the state of Florida. So this is an attack on democracy writ large, but obviously on black folks. This is squarely rooted in racism and anti-blackness, and he's not even trying to hide it. And, and look, the reality is, whether it's this decision, whether it's uh, him leading the removal of Disney's uh, uh, favorite tax status. Uh, we can go down the line. Ron DeSantis is trying to be Donald Trump 2.0. Uh, he's up for re-election as governor, but he also wants to be run. For, he wants to be the Republican nominee for president in 2024. That's what all of these moves are about. And in fact, I dare say that Ron DeSantis, and I said this about Mike Pence, is even more than Donald Trump, we, more dangerous than Donald Trump. We knew Donald Trump was a buffoon. Uh, but what these folks are even more dangerous than that idiot. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and he's demonstrated in a variety of ways. And, and you just mentioned, you know, some of the things. And that's why I always say, you know, people try to act like voter suppression is just, um, you know, just a, a, an administrative um, act. It's, a, it's just a, a, a white collar crime, right? It's a bureaucratic crime. No, voter suppression is a violent crime. It has violent impacts on our lives. And when you have somebody like DeSantis who's in power because of voter suppression and is able to do things like don't say gay and attacking LGBT rights and attacking black rights and, and literally killing people in the state of Florida because of the way that he's handled or mishandled COVID uh, and, and a protest bill, which has literally allowed people to drive cars over protesters. Let's not forget that voter suppression is a violent crime. It is having violent impacts on our lives. And he's using any means necessary to maintain to maintain that. Keep in mind that that and, and shout out to the Florida legislators who, in the midst of this vote on this map, decided to do a sit in uh, and not even just a sit in a full out protest because they weren't just sitting quietly. They were they had signs and were, were walking around. And so shout out to them. But keep in mind what what they did, what the, the Republicans did in response to that. They cut off the Internet. Right. Which is something that you see in, in these these countries that, you know, people try to, to, to paint at as being so authoritarian dictatorships and all that. They cut off the Internet uh, and and um, and then they kicked out the journalists. Right. Which, again, is something that you see in all these authoritarian states. This is what it's come to in the, in the state of Florida. All of it is rooted in anti blackness. But as we often see with racism, structural racism and white supremacy, what starts off. Um, geared directly at us 
eventually Im infects their entire system. Again, the, 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 the constitutional amendment that he is going against in, in Florida law is an amendment that was passed by the voters of Florida. And so he is going against, he's attacking black voters in, in the black community, but in doing so, he is attacking the very nature of Florida democracy and something that Florida voters across the board had voted to approve. Well, I mean, this, these are the games that Republicans are playing, and um, this is also why uh, many folks have been making it clear that Democrats have got to wake the hell up, pay attention to what's going on. Uh, when you look at the polling numbers of President Joe Biden, they're down. Uh, they are not as low as Donald Trump's were at this particular point. Uh, and so Democrats are going to have to muster uh, something uh, uh, to say to voters, especially black voters. Otherwise, otherwise they're going to get obliterated in November, and they very well could take control of the House and the Senate. And if that happens, you're going to see all sorts of federal investigations. Uh, uh, you may see Republicans attempt to impeach uh, President Joe Biden. You're not going to see uh, the black judges that Biden has been appointing get confirmed by the United States Senate. They are going to declare war on black people and America if they are in control of the House and Senate come January 2023. That's right. And, and the only way to keep that from happening, one of the only ways to keep that from happening, and you mentioned it, Roland, Democrats have got to get, including in Congress as well as in the White House, Democrats have got to be just as ruthless about using their power. And yes, I said ruthless. They've got to be just as ruthless about using their power um, for the good, right, um, as, as folks like DeSantis have been for using it for the bad in the name of white supremacy and racism and anti-LGBT and anti-women and, and anti-everybody else, right? That's, that's, their, that's their campaign model, right? Republican Party, we hate everybody. And so, but they don't hate anybody more than black folks. So we need the Democratic candidates, those who are already in office, as well as those that are running for office, to, to be just as clear about their defense about black folks and other marginalized groups and to speak to our issues and to speak so unapologetically that's how you that's how you mobilize a base president biden has got to be just as aggressive at using his power and to to protect students and and to waive student loan debt and and to deal with you know police violence and whatever it is that they can do at the executive level he's got to be just as 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 aggressive at doing that as people like DeSantis are for using their power for the bad. That is the only way. We're not, we don't counter, we're not going to say that you counter hate with hate, right? But you got to counter power with power. And you got to counter it with righteous power that is rooted in love and is responsive to your base the same way DeSantis, as you said, this entire move, it's, he achieves two things. One, he gets to achieve his anti-black fantasies. And two, he gets to establish himself as, as, uh, as somebody who's Trumpier than Trump and as somebody who can, can even stand up to, to Republicans within his own party, de Democrats have got to find that kind of courage and be willing to use their power in the same ways. And the campaign, in a way, that speaks towards that, not to campaign in a way that's speaking towards these, these, these unicorns that they think are out there that are going to somehow be um, um, converted to, to voting for, much the way that one of the, the, the Democratic candidates in Florida, we're not going to go into that, Stepped on, you know, uh, and stepped on her own toes and, and made some mistakes because she was trying to cater to some Trump voters. That's not a winning strategy. All right, then. Cliff Albright, always a pleasure, man. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks.